Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Mark here with another edition of MK Bricks Reviews. Here we have the new LEGO Fender Stratocaster, which is number 21329, and it comes with 1,074 pieces, and it's for ages 18 and older. This product released on October 1st of 2021, and you can buy this product in LEGO stores for $99.99. In this video, I'll be showing you all the parts of the product, and then scoring the product by visual appeal, playability, durability, build time value, and then an overall score towards the end of the video. Before we start, I'd greatly appreciate all feedback, to help me grow my channel so you can start by subscribing to my channel, leaving a like, and commenting down below. Let's get started. The guitar stand was a simple build that took roughly 20 minutes to put together. One key feature I enjoy about it is the ability to be able to fold it up and stow it away. It's held together by a connector piece, folding and unfolding with ease. Another key feature I thought was nicely done was the curvature at the front of the stand, holding the guitar in place and not allowing it to slide off. This replicates the guitar stand the way it should be. You can see that behind the curvature are rubber grips that allow the guitar to sit on top of them nicely, keeping the guitar from sliding or moving around. It does what it needs to do, not perfectly, but it helps. The last thing I'd like to point out is the foundation of the guitar stand, being put together by circular bricks that is nicely capped off with rounded plates at the front. Overall, the stand is small and light, but does the job as it should, and it makes a great addition to the LEGO Fender Stratocaster building set. The Fender Stratocaster, which is 14 inches tall and 4 inches wide, is the first guitar to be released by LEGO, and since it's LEGO's first time, it will come with pros and cons. Beginning with the headstock, we can take note that the headstock is not completely rounded where it should be. The front bottom of the headstock is flat with some openings underneath, which is unappealing. You'll also notice that, as you look at all the edges, it's not completely round and has some bricks raised higher than other pieces. Another downside is where the Fender logo is printed. You'll see that a stud is visible underneath, and that's a total bummer to me. LEGO recently has been making more new pieces, so it's a bit baffling that they do this uh, piece without removing the stud. If we flip the guitar over to the back, you'll notice the part of the headstock is connected by a connector piece. It's not a terrible idea, but once again, kills the smooth aspect of what it could be. On the headstock are the gray tuning keys. The tuning keys are a nice look, using appropriate pieces to replicate what they are supposed to look like. They also do rotate, allowing you to customize its positioning. If there was one thing I'd wish LEGO did differently with the tuning keys, I'd wish they used silver chrome color rather than the flat color of light gray. Moving down to the fretboard, it's made up of four printed plates. The fretboard is appealing and I think they did it just right. The dots are placed where they should be and it's one of the highlights of the guitar in my opinion. If you flip the guitar over to the back, you will see that the back of the fretboard is a cream color and made up of eight 2x2 flat plates. It doesn't round off on the edges like a guitar does, but it surprisingly doesn't bother me all that much. The body of the guitar comes in two colors, which is red or black. You can choose which ones you want to display, as you can see I chose red. On a real guitar, I personally would have chosen black, but with the LEGO set, I chose red for a couple of reasons. One, it won't be a fingerprint magnet once displayed. The second reason is because it contrasts from the guitar amp and the stand, in which it makes it more visually appealing to my eyes when it's displayed together. The body is an interesting build, made up of a bunch of different pieces, whether they are rounded, flat, small, or long. If we look at the bottom of the body, you will notice how rounded off it looks, which is great. As it moves more along to the top or bottom, it doesn't look as smooth. Once again, like the headstock, you have pieces that are raised higher than others, killing the smooth curvature of the body. Looking at the pickguard, we can see that it's in white, which is a standard color for most guitars. I think the pickguard looks appropriate for how it's designed, as it's made up of multiple plates that are pointing or rounded. On top of the pickguard, behind the strings, you can see three pickups that are placed as printed flat tiles. Two of them are straight, and one of them is diagonal. The print on them is silver, and it can be hard to see in certain lighting. A specific lighting can almost make it seem like it disappears, but it's there and it's actually a decent look. You'll also notice the whammy bar, which is movable and an appropriate size. It moves up and down, in and out, and is capped off with a tube-like piece that isn't necessarily rounded off at the end. Not a big deal overall. There are three knobs that are on the pickguard that serve no functions but to just be present. They don't rotate, so there is no turning up the volume or changing the tone. The pickup switch is the same piece you would see in a Speed Champion set, which would serve as a gear shifter. It doesn't look awful, but at the same time, it's just there. The pickup switch can seem too long for what it is supposed to be. You then have your bridge, which is appropriate, but once again, it could have been a silver chrome color instead. One last thing for the front of the body is the input jack for the guitar cable. It moves around with a bit of tension, but no effort to move it left or right. Normally, input jacks are placed and inserted into the guitar rather than sticking out, but I don't know if LEGO would have been able to pull it off or how small it is. Looking at the strings on the guitar, you can see there are actual fabric strings. They are connected to gray studs that are inserted inside the body and placed over the bridge to connect the headstock. There are multiple colorful studs that you will place on top of the gray studs to keep the strings aligned as you place them where they need to be placed before removing those colorful studs. 
Once you place them and remove the colored studs, you will turn the gray studs counterclockwise to tighten the strings. You just have to be careful not to over tighten them or else they will pop off the headstock. The strings are nice overall and they line up very well with equal spacing. Every now and then, the high E string, which is the bottom string, will slightly come off the bottom of the fretboard, meaning you will have to place it back on top and possibly retighten the string at the headstock. If we flip the guitar over, you will see two white plates placed in the middle of the body to replicate where you'd work with the electric guitar's interior if removed. You also have a nice additional gray plate placed where the fretboard and body meet. There is a fender sticker placed on top of the plate, which definitely gives it a nice touch. The guitar strap is a custom strap that was made by LEGO with the Fender logo on it as well as LEGO brick prints, making it a great visual appeal. It is held to the guitar by two studs. The studs are just inserted into the body of the guitar once the strap is also placed with the studs. The strap itself is not too long and not too short, being an appropriate size for the guitar itself. It's definitely one of the more appealing visuals in this set. While the Fender guitar model is a selling point of this building set, I ended up finding the amp to be the best part of the entire build. I believe the amp is a replicate of the Fender 68 Princeton Reverb 12 watt combo amp, and it's half the size of the guitar, and it compacts so many different features to it that it makes it fun to explore. Starting with the front of the amp, you'll see that the graded plates on it make up 86 of the pieces that you need to use to build this. You then slap on the flat gray tile with a Fender sticker on it to show off that it's a Fender branded amplifier. Looking above the graded plates, you'll see an onboard digital effects displaying two input jacks, six knobs that replicate the volume, treble, bass, reverb, speed, and intensity settings. You also get the name of the amp, which is shown by a sticker that says Princeton Reverb Amp, and the light bulb that tells you if the amp is on or off. By the way, the amp does not light up. If we look at the back, you will see at the top there is the amp input power jack, the serial number, which is a sticker, a power switch, two parallel speaker outputs, a foot switch jack, as well as a reverb output and reverb input jack. If we pop off the top plates, you will see seven power tubes, three of them that are clear. You'll also notice that the golden backing of the speakers with cables running through. Very nice addition overall. For the final part of the backing, you can see some of the cables connect to the bottom, displaying all cables serve a purpose in this set. If we look at the top of the amp, you'll see the handle, which is not really a handle, but it's displayed as one, as well as the sidings. A secret compartment is in this amp if you remove the top portion and it reveals all of the secrets to keep an amp running power and effects. It's made up of multiple flat multicolored stud pieces. It's a beauty for sure and it looks super appealing. Maybe now you can see why I find the amp to be the best part of the set. Next we will look at the foot switch which is simple yet replicated very well. It's gray with the bottom being black and has two switches replicated by studs. The left being the channel select switch and the right being the reverb switch. It is then connected by a rubber cable that goes from the switch and into the back of the amp. You also get one more rubber cable that connects to the guitar to the front of the amp. By the way, since these cables are rubber, they are major lint magnets. They get dirty very easily, and they pick up any hair, fur, dirt, and anything else with little effort. Last but not least, I'd like to point out the multiple tiny guitar picks that this set comes with. It comes with four different colors and can be placed anywhere you want. You can place one behind the guitar strings by the headstock, or inside the opening of the amp in the back. I actually chose to place mine on top of the amp because when I'm at practice, that's what I tend to do. Plus, it gives the amp a bit more flair. As I scored the LEGO Fender Stratocaster building set, please keep in mind that this is my own personal opinion, as others may agree or disagree. This is all based on my perception of it and my time building it and displaying it. After displaying it and observing my building set, I found more satisfaction with the amp more so than the guitar itself. The amp delivers so much detail, purpose, and hidden secrets that I personally found amusing. The foot switch is basic, but looks just right for the build. The guitar picks are also a nice touch to the amp if you displayed it on top as well. The guitar stand is appropriate visually, and not too much to brag about. The guitar itself is nice, especially for LEGO's first time creating one. I do like the color choices for the body, the fretboard, the strings, and the guitar strap. What I personally do not find appealing is the janky look of the headstock and some edges of the body which should have been more smoothed out. I don't know what LEGO could have done to fix that unless they made more new pieces to help smooth things out. Since this is LEGO's first guitar release and because the amp is super dope, my score for the visual appeal is a 4 out of 5. As far as playability goes, the building set serves no other purpose really but to be displayed. The amp does not turn on, light up, or make any sounds. The guitar strings will likely snap off if you attempt to strum it. The foot switch does not press in as it's only there for a visual. The only reason I would see someone playing with this is to be goofy or if a child wanted to play pretend guitar, respectfully speaking. As far as the score goes, I'd give it a 2 out of 5. The LEGO Fender set is overall pretty durable. I haven't had any experiences yet while building it where pieces just kept popping off or even trying to display it the pieces never fell off. 
It holds together nice between the guitar, the amp, the foot switch, and the guitar stand. Like I mentioned earlier, playing with it as if you were strumming the guitar, you may just pop the strings off. Excluding that mindset of making this for display purposes only, I would give durability a score of 5 out of 5. Just like with any LEGO set, don't go dropping it because obviously it will break into pieces. Now I actually started this set at 11pm and finished it at roughly about 3 in the morning. This also includes building the black body if I choose uh, to want to swap the colors out, so that took me about 4 hours to build without taking breaks. As far as the score goes, I'd give the build time value a score of 5 out of 5 since it was a $100 set for 4 hours of build time. Some may disagree with the score, but I just naturally build things fast. I even finish video games real fast, so I can't complain too much about you know the pricing and the timing, even if it did cost more than $100. Adding all the scores up, that would be a 16 out of 20. Giving the set an 80%, which would be a B- minus on a grading scale, I do recommend the set for musicians, especially for those who are a fan of Fender guitars. I'd also recommend the set to LEGO builders if they are willing to drop $100. Knowing what i just shown you all, this is what to expect. I put this purchase on the top of my list of LEGO to get because I have been a guitarist for 21 years and this appealed to me the most as one of the new releases. I do hope LEGO continues to make guitars and grow from the little nuisances that is shown on the guitar itself. I would also hope to see a Les Paul version of this one day as that is what I used to play guitar and I think that model would appeal to many guitarists around the world. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, leave a like, and comment below. Until next time, take care everyone.